the world's two most powerful leaders have just had very different years. At the beginning of 2022, Joe Biden was widely portrayed as a failed president. His legislative agenda appeared stalled, while economic troubles seemed to guarantee devastating losses in the midterms. What happened instead was that the Inflation Reduction Act, which is mainly a game-changing climate bill, was enacted, the much-hyped red wave was a ripple, and while many economists are still predicting a recession, unemployment is still low and inflation has been subsiding. By contrast, early this year Xi Jinping, China's paramount leader, was still boasting about his triumph over COVID. Indeed, for a while, People commonly heard assertions that China's apparent success in pandemic management heralded its emergence as the world's leading power. Now, however, she has abruptly ended his signature zero-COVID policy, with all indications pointing to a huge surge in hospitalizations and deaths that will stress healthcare to the breaking point. The Chinese economy seems set to face major problems over the next two or three years and long-term projections of Chinese economic growth are being marked down. China's future, it seems, is not what it used to be. Why? China's ability to limit the spread of the coronavirus with draconian lockdowns was supposed to demonstrate the superiority of a regime that doesn't need to consult the public, that can simply do what needs to be done. At this point, however, Xi's refusal to make preparations to move on, his failure to adopt the most effective vaccines and get shots in the arms of his most vulnerable citizens have highlighted the weakness of authoritarian governments in which nobody can tell the leader when he's getting it wrong. Beyond the imminent prospect of carnage, China's long-running macroeconomic problems seem to be reaching a tipping point. It has been obvious for years that China's economy, despite an awesome history of economic growth, is wildly unbalanced. Too few of the gains from growth have trickled down to households, keeping consumer spending low as a share of gross domestic product. Extremely high rates of investment have filled the gap, but all indications are that investment is running into severely diminishing returns, with businesses ever more reluctant to spend on new ventures.